Have you ever thought about building your own PC? If you have, and you can use a screwdriver, then all you need is a little know-how. Now the first bit, I can definitely do the second. Well, that is what I'm here to find out. Stay tuned and we'll take you through all the steps to make your own custom PC. Well, I've never built a PC before, so I'm pretty excited. So let's get on with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the inaugural switch on of my first hand built PC. So charge your glasses. Before you do that, I think we should just quickly recap our journey to get here. After installing the processor and memory in the motherboard and fitting it into the case, we then added the power supply, graphics card, hard drive and optical drive. And if you missed any of the parts, then just click back to watch them first. Okay. Well, we've just plugged in a keyboard, mouse and monitor, something I'm sure you've done many times before, and we're ready for the switch on. Allow me, I am totally qualified now. Do I get a certificate? Think of your new PC as a huge, powerful certificate you can also play games on. Right, you do the honours. Now, as we haven't installed Windows yet, the first thing we need to do is go into the BIOS. This usually involves either pressing one of the F keys or the Dell key at startup. It'll tell you in your motherboard manual. And it's worth pressing it just a few times to make sure. Now what's pretty nice about this ASUS BIOS is you can navigate it using a mouse and there are icons rather than just lots of text. So it's a bit friendlier. I like friendly, it's a nice thing to be. Okay, now the first thing you want to check in the BIOS is the processor temperature. If there are no warnings here, then you know you've connected up the heatsink and fan correctly. Over here, you can also check the individual fans are running properly. Too much heat can kill a PC, so it's essential to check that these are working properly first. Oh, looks good to me. Can I use that new creation then? Almost. We first need to install Windows and then we're ready to go. So put the disk in and then reboot to start the installation process. This will take a while, so let's go make a cup of tea and we'll see you when it's finished loading. Right, we're back and it's alive! It is indeed. Now there are a couple of extra things we can do thanks to the ASUS motherboard in this machine. Whether you have something similar depends on what board you've used. I'm intrigued, uh, so show me more. Well, first we need to install the ASUS software and drivers that came with the motherboard. Now there's an install all option here which helps speed things up. We need to run this first for the drivers and then the utilities. Set it going and then we're going to go get another cup of tea while it installs. I'm always up for another cup of tea. Okay, now that's loaded, start the AI Suite 2 application. So what does this let me do? It basically gives you control over fine-tuning your PC so it's set up the best way for you. For example, you can often get extra performance from your processor by running it at faster speed. We call this overclocking. Extra performance for no extra cost, I am all over that. Is it complicated? It can be, but the Turbo V Evo function makes it pretty simple. If you know what you're doing, you can use it to tweak all the settings by hand. But if you just want a quick boost, the auto-tuning option will do it for you. Just click the auto-tuning button to get started. There are two options, fast and extreme. To try them out, just read the warning messages and then click OK. Your PC will reboot a few times, but once it's worked out their best settings, it will save them to the BIOS so you get a faster system. OK, sounds good, but what if I go power crazy and push things a bit too far? Well, usually the worst that will happen is that your PC will refuse to boot. There are many fail-safes that shut down the system to avoid damaging the components. And of course, if you do overclock your system, then this is at your own risk and you can't blame us if everything goes wrong. Okay, so that sounds fair to me, but what if I fail to listen to your advice and my PC won't boot? Well, it probably means that you push the settings too far. In order to return your PC to its previous state, on most motherboards, you just need to reset the BIOS and it will boot with the default values. This usually involves opening the case or either changing a jumper or pressing a reset button. This motherboard also has a USB BIOS flashback function, so you can even update the BIOS on a non-functional system using a USB stick. And you can do this without a processor or memory installed. Okay, so we've covered power, but what if I'd rather have a bit of peace and quiet instead? Then you should fire up the Fan Expert 2 utility in the tool section of AI Suite. The auto-tune option will tailor the performance of each fan, whether you're after silent, standard or turbo. Just let it do its thing and you can have a quieter system or one primed for performance. Right, well that's much better. I'm getting into this whole tweaking thing. So is there anything else I can change? Well, the Digi Plus power control is a good place to start. We can use the Smart Digi Plus to overclock the PC by adjusting the voltages. 
but more interestingly, we can also use it to reduce the total power consumption, which will save you money on your electricity bill. Well, I am all about saving money, so how do I do that? Well, just choose from the 45 watt or 35 watt options and then click the button. Your PC will be running in a power friendly mode, although this does mean you might not get the maximum performance. It's all a trade off. Sounds good. That's me done. I think I'm going to need some quality time with my new creation. And hopefully you've enjoyed our tutorial and you now feel confident in building your own PC. I know I do and now I won't have to bug my geeky friends to help me. I can just do it myself.